Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you the exact trades that made me lose over a thousand dollars day trading in the stock market. Today I got caught on a massive red candle in which we saw the price just completely tank 10, 20, 30, 40 cents in a split in a split of a second. So finishing the day here on a loss, finishing the day here on a red note, um, because I essentially just gave everything, all of my profits. I gave them back to the market because I wasn't grateful for them. I didn't walk away early enough and I ended up losing and catching some big, big flushes here. I got caught in two big flushes today. And after we review them, I'm going to give you the secret of things that you can do to hopefully avoid these type of flushes. Trade number one, ticker symbol NUCE, which all in all was the stock that gave the most opportunities today. We had a few patterns that actually result in, in nice moves. We had a flat top breakout here. We had the break of pre-market highs. We had a halted stock. We had a halted, halted setup. It was a nice move. And throughout the front side, I was able to make over $2,000. Went for a breakout of eight. Couldn't get it. Gave, gave, a few, gave a few dollars back. Was sitting at around $1,700, $1,800 on the day and on the ticker itself. And then here I attempted the first one mini pullback. It failed, lost like $500. And then from that, I left it alone. But then here is when I, you know, I, I realized that this stock was a boundless, ba bounceless stock, a boundless, bottomless barrel. And I knew that it was going to be choppy before it decided to give a secondary move. What I started noticing was this strict consolidation we were looking just underneath VWAP. And if this were and if, and if this was a very weak stock, we wouldn't see any sort of consolidations on the, on the VWAP. We would just simply break on the VWAP completely and completely sell off from it. Maybe retest it once like we did here, but then trickle down, making new lower lows and higher lows. No, and lower highs. The moment I saw this big consolidation here, I felt like we could essentially create a bear trap. We could we could create a pattern in which it looks weak enough for short sellers to get in because we're under VWAP, we're kind of like doing a big bear flag. But at the same time, if we're able to stop out all the shorts that are piling in here as they're accumulating, I thought that there was easy potential for us to go again and retest VWAP, or even better, break through it and break through the pivot 688 that would probably teleport us through seven. So what was my game plan? Knowing that entire story in the back of my head, what was the entry I decided to take? The triple bottom entry. So I wanted to see a triple bottom. I wanted to see this support that we've been hold that we had been holding all throughout more all throughout the morning. I wanted to see that same level continue to hold. So I jumped back in here. I gave it a stab at around six twenty, thinking triple bottom, right? First bottom, double bottom. We held and pushed off it. We held and pushed off it. Triple bottom. We're gonna hold and push off it this time around. I think we're going to clear this high and go again, go against VWAP, um, but got in and it matters, it matters, it matter of seconds and not even seconds, like a split second, this thing teleported from 620 to 50 to 574, giving me like a $700 loss, instant loss, big flush, you know, and from that, mo from that moment on all my discipline, all my patience, me being in the zone, whatever, whatever, went out the window. I took a big monetary loss, but worse than that, I took a big mental loss because my, you know, my fuse. I like, I like, I like talking about the concept of us as trading having a fuse. Us as traders, we are humans, right? Meaning that we are a bomb waiting to explode. But the idea is that you follow certain practices so that in each given trading session, you can enlarge and elongate your fuse. The longer your fuse the more losses and the more bullshit you can withstand before you blow up, before you get emotionally hijacked, before whatever, whatever, right? Before you start breaking rules, revenge trading, all that. So I like to believe that each individual human, we are different from each other, obviously. So each individual human is already born with a certain length of, of a fuse, right? People that are more propensive to being triggered, being upset, um, to being upset at the idea that they're not right, blah, blah, blah. Those are traders that have to be more careful and mindful about that fuse. They're going to start trading with the smaller fuse. Some other traders are super calm, cool, collected, not only trading, but in whatever it is 
in life, right? They're just a chill individual. They may have a long fuse, which means that they can withstand a bunch of losses, a bunch of bad fails, a bunch of, you know, stocks being stupid, all that, and for some reason not be affected by it that much, right? But for me, I would say I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, what's the word? I'm more reactive and I can get triggered easily. So my fuse is inherently small. And the way I, 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 I elongate it is by doing meditation, by doing stock study sessions, by sitting here early enough and following a very strict routine, by having a game plan in, ma in mind every single morning, blah, 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 right? But today, much of my fuse was expent, was expent, spent, was spent on, you know, bottomless pullbacks, big flushes, penny stocks moving, moving on the side, getting too distracted in the discord, you know, playing too much around because there wasn't anything to trade, paying too much attention, too much attention to Nvidia and AMD because they were the only ones that were moving because of earnings yesterday, right? Checking out Tesla and all that, um, you know, and I already spent a, a bunch of my mental capital. And after this flush here, I went bankrupt, mentally bankrupt. I couldn't have it. I didn't have any more patience to spare. Anyway, so here's where my day started snowball. So from daily goal of $2,000 to now only up 100 bucks in a day to now ready to revenge trade on whatever ticker that comes around. And as you can see, I'm sitting on the day flat. I'm sitting up $90, right? It's essentially break even. Some would even say it's a small red, but look at these. Very, very poor accuracy. Red on red on TBIO, red on Arnev, red on PNEC, PMEC, um, green on NUC, red on NCNC, just red across the board. And the one that really triggered me today, which is the reason why I'm stopping here a little earlier, is PMEC. A stock that I was maybe too biased on the idea that we were going to break through one, that I mistimed it and I got screwed around and I was just in too early with too much shares and I got caught on a second flush. This was my secondary big loss of the day that really sent me flying and, and sent me to the spiral of emotional trading. So I was dialing in, where it was, where was it? Let me see. So when I started looking at this, we hadn't broken one yet. We had double topped that one right there, 99 cents. But for me, that was just normal price action. I still really believe we could we could break through it. And this is the pattern that I was looking like, that I was looking at. Little wedge, right? Little wedge just underneath one. And I was looking to accumulate on top of that support, ascending support, so that when we went and retested one again, I could be holding a nice share size and also a nice average and hopefully sell through the break of one. So where did I bought? Where do you think I bought? Where, where, where do you think I bought? I bought right here. Right against the ascending support. You many times have, have seen me here and doing my recaps or my YouTube channel, take live trades I can support that can very easily work. But this time it didn't work. And in, 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 it clearly didn't work. It just completely flushed against my face. Um, I was holding like 10,000 shares. I lost X amount of cents. I bottom ticked this low, right? So I stopped out of the very, very bottom. And then off we went again. So when this happened, I went red on the day, like for like $500, like, like $300, I don't remember. Um, but then I still was so biased that this thing was going to break through one that I decided to wait around to wait around for that break. Uh, decided to wait for that break. Um, ignore this break, ignore this one we pulled back here, but I started accumulating size as I saw that we were approaching one yet again, but this time around, check out this volume. Volume was coming in, tape was going crazy, uh, level two was accelerating, people were buying. I just clearly read that price action. I jumped in another 10, 15,000 shares and was selling through one, 102, 103, 104. So I made back almost all my loss. So I had lost like a thousand bucks in this flush, had made it all back, was only red a hundred dollars. But guess what? The fuse that I was talking about earlier was gone. Me not being on my daily goal was bothering me now, right? 
Whereas instead, when I still am, when I'm still trading mindfully, I don't care about goals. I don't care about trading my PNL. I'm just, I'm just care about trading the correct stock at the right time, my setups, and that's it. But now I'm mostly hijacked, right? And I've I've done a very decent recovery. I was I was you know sitting like at a hundred dollar a day, but that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. I had two thousand. I wanted it back. I didn't care anymore, and I was emotionally fueled, right? Because I had no fuse. Mental capital was was done. So what did I proceed to do? Um, I revenge traded my way into losing it all again. So, you know, I took some very risky positions at, at some points. Definitely the 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 thought of I don't care. I'm going all in. I'm risking it all. I don't care. That thought was creeping too many times through my mind as I was taking trades. I don't know if it was like here. I think here, I was like I don't care. This is going to either make or break my day. Either I'm either I'm going to be up two thousand or down two thousand after this trade. And I would buy like 25, 30, 35,000 shares, right? And this is a penny stock, yes, but it really and truly is like trading at a dollar, right? So it's not really like anymore a penny stock. It's, I was buying at like 96, right? So I don't know if I could justify that that much share size. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. Here we go. And then the longer, the longer the trade wouldn't go in my favor, the more time I had to think it would be like, shit, this is risky, man. What are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Let's just, let's just get out here, break even or for like a small loss. And then I would start to unwind and lose big just because of slippage, because the because the because the the, the share size was so big, but not anything as bad as me getting caught with that type of size on a big flush. Started to unwind. I caught myself having self sabotage thoughts. And I was like, you know what, man, that's it. That's it. I checked my PNL. I was up at ninety dollars, and I was like, you know what, like. Even if you even if you make a thousand dollars out of this, who cares, right? The risk of you continuing to trade emotionally fueled is not worth a thousand dollars or ninety dollars because the risk can be like you blowing up and being down five thousand on the last day of the month. So I decided to call it a day here. Um, I'll do a month a month in review tomorrow or Friday, but um, at the very least, I'm going to have it out this week. I have no idea where I'm sitting in the month. If I had to guess, it's not a record-breaking month or anything like that. Um, you know, I think I, I didn't trade for the first week because my Tao Schwab account was 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 non-existent. And all my money was gone <laughs> from my account. Um, and then on top of that, it took me like another week to get back into the groove of, all right, I'm back to trading after not trading for like three weeks. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm not out of the game just yet. Let's see if I remember how to do this. And, you know, got back in the groove a little bit. I was having some bigger red days, being a little too careless. Um, but anyways, that's, that, that definitely, that's definitely going to put a dent, a dent on my month. But nonetheless, as one of the most transparent day trading channels in the community, well, actually, not one of the most, like the most transparent day trading channel in YouTube, aside from Trading with Tim and Relentless. We're all as transparent as it gets. I don't know if anybody is as transparent as us. So he's not one of the most. I think it's, we are the only ones that are transparent. Um, I'm going to show you my month, right? I'm going to show you my month as I do every month. And, and let me know in the comments down below how much you think it is. I'm going to be posting that recap tomorrow. And let's see who's right. All right. All right, friends. It's been the mighty. Stay safe, stay green, I'll catch you on the next one.